Hey y'all. If you are already subscribed, welcome back my darling. And if this is your first time stopping by or you have not yet subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe and join a part of the Morgan Shea Beauty Gang. Now, in today's beauty and documentary breakdown, we are going to break down this makeup tutorial right here. And also the Netflix documentary, Girls Incarcerated. And we're gonna go over basically all of season one. I'm gonna talk about different things that they have with inside of this specific juvenile prison. We're gonna talk about some of the girls and their situations. And we're also gonna talk about some of the things that happens after they get released, some success stories. We're gonna talk about the ins and outs of Madison Juvenile Correctional Facility within Madison, Indiana. I think that this is an incredible program. I also really hope that you guys enjoy this. I have told you all many times that I do want to use my platform for prison reform. I am very much on the same page as that of Christina Randall and Jessica Kent. I do think that our pres prison system needs a lot of help, but I do think that Madison Juvenile Facility is a really big step in the right direction. They are doing so much for these girls and this is considered a juvenile prison. So keep that in mind going in. Now these are smaller offenses in season one when we get into season two they actually move locations and it gets they get some more serious offenders but we're only going to do a breakdown of season two if this video gets to 10 likes so get this video to 10 likes if you would like to see the part two of beauty and documentary on this particular documentary series also do not forget there will be a secret emoji somewhere in here and if you yourself would like to have an extra entry into my 100 subscriber giveaway you can comment it down below and all you have to do to be entered into my 100 subscriber giveaway is be subscribed be subscribed and for extra entries you can comment the secret emoji down below so please subscribe to my channel i want to grow my family already to bigger and bigger and bigger so let's go ahead and break down this makeup tutorial and the Netflix documentary, Girls Incarcerated. Let's get into today's warning. Warning, the following video is going to contain talk of drug abuse, drug use. It's also gonna be containing talk of violence, child neglect, child abuse, and sexual situations. This all has to do with that of, of minors. I will not be naming any of the names of the girls in this documentary. Um, I will just be explaining their situation. However, some of these situations are a little bit intense. I don't know, I haven't decided how many of them I'm really gonna talk about in this documentary. Um, I'm more so just gonna be explaining Madison Juvenile Correctional Facility, but I may be talking about a few of the situations. So let's just be respectful to everyone in the comment section below and be nice to my opinion because as we know, this is my opinion. Opinions are like assholes and we all have one. Anyways, y'all, viewer discretion is advised. Per usual, y'all, all the products that I do use on my face will be linked down in the description box, including the Benefit Brow products and Kevin Kwan concealer that I used on my lid. Madison Juvenile Correctional Facility is located in Madison, Indiana. Of course, it is a juvenile correctional facility. However, it is considered a juvenile prison, but is not a YO program. Now, this particular prison is ran by Gallipo, John Gallipo, and he is the superintendent. Basically, I'm going to be describing what Madison is and different things that the documentary does show about Madison. However, of course, it does illustrate the girls a little bit more, but I'm not sure of their ages. They are all minors in this documentary, so I'm not going to be discussing their names. Um, we will be talking about drama and different stuff like that and some of the stories with the girls. I just will not be naming them in particularly. So Gallipo has been working with kids for over 20 years. And what I found in this documentary is that this is his passion and this is what he is good at. These girls absolutely look up to this man and they look at him as like a father figure and some of them, that is the only father figure that they have. And one of the first things that they want you to familiarize yourself with is the difference between maroon 
and purple shirts because all of the girls are either wearing maroon or purple shirts. So purple shirts after the girls get out of intake and are put into the general population, they are given a purple shirt. Now, after they have been there and they've proven themselves worthy of, as in not getting into trouble, getting their grades, their grades are good, you know, no fights, not getting in any trouble with the correctional officers, etc. At that point, they are they can then become eligible for a maroon shirt. Now, of course, maroon shirts come with special privileges. So they get these special pizza lunches. They also um, are on honors. They are also like mentors. So they're supposed to mentor the girls in purple shirts how to behave and, you know, they're supposed to lead by example, in other words. Now, one of the privileges that the girls talk about the most, obviously with the maroon shirts, is the early release. That your release date gets changed, so you can leave earlier, in other words. Faculty that they introduce you to in the documentary is Mrs. Minnick, and I absolutely loved her. She's a psychiatrist and counselor for the children, and they absolutely love this woman, let me tell you. And in the documentary, it does show her leaving the facility. Um, she is moving to Texas to get her master's degree. And these girls are just devastated that she's leaving. All of these girls have gotten this really good bond and connection with Miss Minnick. And she makes little goodie bags for them um, with hygiene products and everything like that. And she was just, I mean, it showed her as just such a good, good person. And these girls absolutely treasured her. But they used Miss Minnick as someone that the girls could depend on, rely on, and go to in those times when they were having a rough day where they might be about to lose their temper. They could go to her for anything, whether it be their anger management issues, whether it be their, you know, drug abuse issues. And no matter what it was, Miss Minnick was there for the girls. And I think that's why they treasured her so much. But again, it would show her leaving the facility. Aside from like solitary confinement, which they do have something like that that we'll get into here a little later. But at this point in the documentary, they go ahead and familiarize you with time out which is a room where the girls go, they can ask to go there or they can be placed in timeout. And it's where they go when they are getting, you know, they can, if they're getting frustrated, they can ask to go there. If, you know, they get in an argument with another girl, they can either be asked to go there or ask to go there. And it's just a solitary room where they go for, you know, 20, 30 minutes to an hour. The girls do not stay in that room overnight. It's literally time out. So they just go in there for a specific amount of time or however long they need to or request to, etc. So at this point in the documentary, they introduce us to the shape up zone that they have there on the campus, I guess you could call it, which the shape up zone is basically like a rec room, a, a gym. And during the documentary, they show through physical activity how it does help girls. And a lot of the girls were athletes, you know, in their normal everyday life. So a lot of them are very, very good. They play tennis and kickball and different things like that. And they also play it competitive. So they'll have like teams. Now I did show, I did see on the documentary that this can cause conflict obviously between the girls. They will argue over, you know, a score or what have you, but a lot of the girls do um, take advantage of it for the better and it does help them in their program. So throughout the documentary, they talk to several of the girls. I would say in total, there's probably about 10 different girls that they speak to all throughout the documentary and they kind of switch it out. 
And one of the main things that the girls complained about are the rules. The rules are put in place for a purpose. There is a reason why Madison has come up with these rules. One of the biggest rules that I've seen in the documentary that they definitely do not abide by is the note passing rule. So they're not allowed to pass any type of notes. They are given like journals and stuff for class. And also their counselor does encourage them to take notes of how they're feeling and different thoughts. But a lot of the girls do take advantage of these notebooks and they do write other girls in there or what have you. But of course, Gallipo says that the reason why he prefers for them not to pass notes is because it can cause issues. Obviously, if there are some of them arguing, you know, they could, you know, plan something, an attack or anything like that. He said, so he, he does not like the note passing and they do get in trouble if they are caught. So fights. In this documentary, there are plenty of like back and forth bickering fights that gets girls sent to Mac. Now Mac is what we would think of as like the hole or solitary confinement. And the fights that they have, there's one in particular of a girl who slams another girl's, like they have these, they have tablets for class. And each one of them are assigned a tablet for their stay there. And that's what they use for class and you know, whatever activities they need it for. And one of the girls slams another girl's tablet on the ground and busts it. And the other girl gets so mad when she does this that she takes all of her, the girl had just gotten like her hygiene products and the other girl takes her hygiene products and squeezes all of them out in the trash can. Now, <laughs> of course their behavior is a big part of the program. So if they are not behaving, then they do get marked down. So there is a chart which we'll get a little bit more into that here in a minute, but they have like a guide of points. Points added, points deducted. It's for your grades, it's for you know your work. So if you're in the kitchen, how are you doing in the kitchen? If you are outside and you do like raking leaves or what have you, how are you doing that? You know, there are different positions that they have. They get markups. For, for the good things that they do, but also when they get in these arguments, they do get markdowns. Now, early on in the documentary, one of the first girls who gets released, and we'll get into her soon because I just love her, but she is getting, as you will find in this documentary, that the closer that they get to their release date, the antsier that they get. They get very, very antsy and they start misbehaving. And that's what happens with this one in particular girl. Her and another girl get into an argument and she gets put into Mac for like three days when she only had, I think like five left. She also lost her maroon shirt right before she was let out. So, you know, <laughs> arguments obviously happen and it is a juvenile prison full of young girls so of course there's going to be arguments there's going to be fights it's going to happen there's also they talk a lot about the girls um before the netflix got there um like when they're leaving like how one of the girls said that she got into a fight with a guard and she's completely turned her life around. And so there are some major success stories. And I think a lot of that is thanks to Madison and the program. So MAC or solitary confinement, that stands for making a change. And they're supposed to just go in there and think about what they have done and make a change. That's literally what it is for. Now, obviously they have the chow hall. If you are unfamiliar with what a chow hall is, that is basically the dinner hall where they go eat. You will see in the documentary, which of course, Beauty and Documentary Breakdown is simply basically a breakdown of the documentary. And I hope that you do follow me on social media, which is all linked down below for the announcement of what documentary we're gonna be breaking down so that you can kind of follow along with me. This is supposed to be like a discussion. But you will see in the documentary that the girls in the maroon shirts, they do get like a pizza lunch, okay? 
Well, there is a part in the documentary where one of the girls who works in the kitchen on one of the pizza days, she's like, I am not cleaning up their mess. This is bull crap. And then they'll like talk about, oh, is that cheese? Cheese is so gross. <laughs> like stuff like that, just because they're so pissed that they don't get pizza. So like I said, it's a bunch of girls in a juvenile prison. So of course, you know, there's going to be beggars, but yeah. Chow Hall is basically where they go and eat. And one of the first girls to get released that I'm going to be telling you all about here in a minute, she's actually the second one to be released in the documentary. She says that after she left Madison, she was actually sick for like weeks because she was, she felt like she was eating like not real food. <laughs> So of course, release days are the days that they are set to release. Now, to be released. Now, of course, this date can change based on them. Everything is based on them and their behavior. Everything, all throughout it. Also, another big difference in Madison and a lot of other facilities is their family can visit any time that they want. More importantly, Gallipo says that he thinks that it's extremely important for family to visit and to see the change in their children and also for the children to be able to interact with their family since they are missing out on some of their teenage years. I mean, you have to think about it. Most of these girls, so 16, 17, almost 18 years old, so they're going to be missing out on prom. So they're missing out on all those high school opportunities that they will not be able to get back. And so Gallipo says that he encourages family to come as often as they want. Now I'm gonna tell you about one of the girls in the documentary and this, oh, this sweet little girl, oh my goodness, it just breaks my heart. So the story with her is just so freaking pitiful. So her, she's been there her time. She was supposed to be released long before this um, documentary started, but she has nowhere to go. She has nowhere to go. She has, you know, nobody will, her mom won't come get her, her dad won't come get her, and she's just the sweetest little girl. So, you know, of course, they have family days as well at Madison, and you just see her pitiful little face whenever, you know, other, other girls have their family. She just looks so, so devastated. And also, because she is going through this, she also does make up different stories like, you know, oh, I'm gonna get to go here, or I'm gonna get to go there. And the psychiatrist there, she says, you know, that that's just one of her coping mechanisms and something that helps her get through. So like I mentioned earlier, the girls do have like actual rooms. So there's bunk beds in there and then they also can decorate the walls however they want to. The psychiatrists there and counselors will print them off like little sayings and quotes that they can hang up on the wall. And some of the girls have roommates, but most of the girls I seen had their own room with an empty bunk. So, like I said, there are bunk beds, but most of the girls have their own little rooms. The doors do lock, just like, they're not like bar doors, but they are like locked, like jail doors. But also on the episode where they show Miss Minnick, the counselor, the episode where she leaves, they also show another program they have at Madison called Y-Try, which is basically a program that the counselor started there to give the girls reasons of why to try. Why to try while they're there at Madison. Why to put their best foot forward. And I think that that is just another really good program that Madison does offer. Minors. So minors is basically something like you've gotten in trouble. So how many minors did you get? And you know, is that gonna cost you being able to get your burgundy? You know, what is that gonna mean for you? And you will see some of the girls lose their tempers over not being able to get their burgundies. One in particular, she pitches a fit. A lot of these girls have had a really, really tough life. So I'm talking like really, really tough lives. Spot they've been in foster care. And we have a story with one of the girls here in a minute. It breaks my heart. The second girl to leave, which I kind of mentioned her earlier, the one who got in the fight and lost her maroon right before her release date. 
They continuously like updated with her throughout the documentary. And y'all, she's do she did so, so good. Um, really took advantage of the program. She said days after she left, she called Madison and thanked them for everything they did for her. And she was building her relationship with her mom, which hadn't always been the best and being just a good role model for her brother. And she thanks everything to Madison. She said that Madison really did give her a second opportunity at life. Of course, rumors go around in at Madison. Of course, these are a bunch of teenage girls. So of course, rumors are gonna fly like the wind. And one of the bigger things that the girls will talk about other girls for is not showering. That is one of the biggest things that I heard going around is, oh, she doesn't bathe, she doesn't shower, look at her hair's greasy. So they really do not get down with the get down if you do not bathe in there at all. Of course, there's clicks. There are clicks in this juvenile prison, just like anywhere. They're girls, so of course they're gonna click up. And there are there is bullying, which there is one girl who actually is, she was my favorite. Like I said, there is bullying. So they will bully each other and, you know, call each other names and different stuff like that. But if they are caught, they lose privileges and they will lose their maroons and their date will get pushed back. So Gallipo also brings up here the return rate for Madison. So he says that it is much lower than anywhere else in the country and says that their return rate, so girls who will return back, is only 17%. That's incredible. So you do meet a couple of girls who this is their second return back to Madison. One of which she definitely is using this return to Madison to her advantage. She has her maroon shirt. She has her burgundy shirt. She also was salutatorian, graduated and got her diploma and was released and is doing very, very well. Another one of the girls that is has returned to Madison for a second time. She has had a very rough life. So her aunt and uncle actually have custody of her and they call themselves her parents and they are. They have raised this girl and they're not giving up on her and they keep having her go to Madison because they just want her to have the life that she can. And they, you know, she has the opportunity to basically do whatever she wants. And, and, you know, they will provide for whatever she wants to do in life. But she has returned back to Madison. And right before she came back to Madison for the second time, her biological mother got in contact with her, wanting to spend time with her. So this girl goes and spends time with her biological mother. That is the issue you will see with a lot of these girls is they just want that connection with their father or their mother or whoever it may be. And because they don't get that, they, they do act out. So she goes to a hotel and meets up with her biological mother and her, boy, her biological mother's boyfriend. Well, when she gets there, they end up forcing her to inject heroin and methamphetamines. It was, they actually show a news clip from the local news of when she actually, when, you know, they actually found her and said that when she got to the hospital, her withdrawals were so, so bad that she was shaking and like passing out. And of course the mother and boyfriend were put into prison for neglect. So she's just had it really, really rough, but she is a very blessed girl to have the aunt and uncle that she does, because like I said, they consider themselves her parents and they take care of her. Like I said, most of them have real issues with parents. There are some of them, like the one girl that I mentioned, whose parents have like left her there, abandoned her there. There's some whose parents is in and out of prison and so they're basically following the example. They're lead by example. And that's the only example that they've been shown is to act out and be violent and do drugs, so they do the same. However, in my personal opinion, I do think that Madison has the right idea here. And I don't think that it should only be with children. I think that there should be something like this out there for adults that isn't so 
I don't know. I just feel like what we're doing isn't right. Isn't right. This right here on the screen is the percentage of returns of adult prisoners when they're released. What percentage of them will come back to prison? We need prison reform, and I don't know if this is the perfect idea right here, what they've got going on at Madison, but I think that it's an amazing idea or something that we could base ideas off of. Now, another one of the things that the girls really complain about is the fact that they're not allowed to shave. So, <laughs> the girls really hate that they cannot shave, buddy. And they show the cameras their armpits and their legs. And then some of the girls are like, oh, who cares? We're just like the French. That's what one of the girls says, you know. We're just like, we're in France, you know, they don't shave. Also, you will see some of the girls go from complete enemies talking so much shit about each other to like BFFs and being the best of friends. And that's just another, that's girls. That's literally girls. That's, you know, when you put a bunch of them together, 45 in this case, that's what you get. Well, completely off topic, but I have been using the Bailey Ser Sarian Venice Fling Palette for my contour and blush here lately. Y'all, this palette is literally a, a one in one. I'm about to try Ocean Ave as my highlight. A little bit too dark, so, but now I know. That would be really pretty if you had a deeper complexion, but for me, it's just a little too dark, but tan lines, I mix tan lines and toasty as my bronzer and my contour and then I used rose tattoo as my blush. I just think it's so pretty. Another term that they use in the documentary is sanctions. So basically what this is or what this means is that they get their date pulled. So if they get too many sanctions, then they're going to get their date pulled. They also do have Mrs. Sparks in the documentary. She is the community director and throughout the documentary, they show different things that she does. So basically, she has different groups or volunteers come and do different things for the girls. There was one that came and they like could crush cans with their bare hands and bend a crowbar in their mouth. And um, they also tell like their testimonies. They do also have Bible study there for the girls because uh, the community director, she does say that Madison is a very Christian based place and that they do like the girls to know that they, through faith, they can get through anything. Also at Madison, they do have family day. So on family day, they have like a cookout and all the girls that family wants to come are able to come. Now with that, of course, just like I said, there are girls there with no family. So some of the girls don't have anybody to come and visit them. And I just have to say, that it is just so pitiful, but the way that the staff just wraps their arms around these girls and just like loves them and is there for them, is just absolutely amazing, you guys. I highly recommend this documentary. So now I'm gonna tell you about one of the girls there that this one may make me cry. I cried watching the documentary. So this young girl, um, I don't know if I mentioned this in the beginning, but they are able to place themselves into Madison. So it does not have to be court appointed or, you know, their family putting them there. They can decide to put themselves into Madison. And there was one girl, only one, um, in the documentary who done this. And this young girl, just such a sweetie. I mean, such a little sweetie, but she was at a party with her friends and it was raining and she flipped into a ditch and one of her friends was killed in the car accident and she was driving. And because of the grief that she has because of this, she decides, she said that she needed help and that she needed to learn her lesson. And because, you know, the judge obviously said, you know, this was an accident, you know, 
you weren't drinking or anything. It was an accident. So he didn't put her in jail or anything. She went and she signed herself into Madison. And her mother and the victim's family, the friend of hers who passed away, they, you know, the friend's family has obviously forgiven her. It was an accident. And they just all hope that she can learn to forgive herself. Um, but throughout the documentary, she stays there. She does not leave during the documentary. So one of the next girls to leave, she has an attitude, honey. And really and truly, she was the one that I really thought when they went to go update with her, that she was gonna be one of those that was, you know, out running rampant, but I was wrong. I was wrong. She actually turned everything around and is doing really, really well. But honey, when I tell you all, she would snap on them officers if they didn't do what she asked, or she'd snap on them girls if they wouldn't do something. Oh my goodness. The attitudes these girls have and the anger issues these girls have is on a whole other level. Y'all really have to watch it to really understand. I'm trying to break it down the best I can, but woo, buddy, did she have a freaking mouth. They also have this thing called release art. So upon them actually being able to leave throughout their stay at Madison, they have to do certain activities, whether that be for their drug abuse or that be for their anger management or whatever they're working on at Madison. They have to complete different projects given by the teachers and the counselors in order to leave. If they lose this folder with this stuff in it, they cannot leave. That is one thing that you cannot lose or what have you. They will make you stay. And the, the girl that I just told you about with the attitude, she lost her folder the day of her release and they were like scanning the whole prison looking for this folder and they finally found it. So yeah, the girls cannot lose this folder and it's full of all different kinds of things like um, different uh, coping mechanisms that they're going to do when they do leave and you know, their uh, what their triggers are and just different stuff like that. Also, when they do go to release, they have their mentor, which is one of the officers there they also have um, one of the in superintendent over like the schooling there. And then they have one of the release officers in there, which is different for each one. They didn't show their faces. When they go up for release, they have to, you know, explain to them what they're gonna do in certain situations. So they'll ask them, you know, if you're put in a situation and somebody, say for instance, spits in your face, what are you gonna do then? And if anybody in the room says that they disagree and do not believe that they should be able, they say they disagree and doesn't believe that she should be able to leave, she has to stay. But that did not happen during the documentary. Phone calls, they can make a phone call pretty much any time. So they go into their day room. So the day room is where they spend so many, so many hours a day. I think they get like a couple hours in there a day. It has a TV, it has assigned seating. So each unit has their own day room. There's also like a pinball. They have like um, Uno and card games and stuff like that, but that's also where the phones are. And so the girls can pretty much just go make a phone call whenever. They do also have the JPay, save pictures on it. They can write letters on it, emails, etc. They like to show on the documentary pictures of their family and their friends and different stuff like that. So relationships. You know, there's some relationships and they focus on one primarily on the documentary, there is of course talk of other relationships with some of the other girls, but there's one that like this girl, that's all that she really talked about was her relationship with this other individual girl. They use the term, we're gonna be together on the outs, which obviously they're gonna be together when they're out. And there was no arguments over girls. However, if one of the girls doesn't, you know, talks to another girl or something like that, it does cause complications. And obviously this is against the rules. They are not supposed to be in relationships. They do have a stack rank. 
So every single week, based off of grades and the way that they behave, if they have had any outburst or any sanctions or anything like that, there is a ranking. So based off of this ranking, of course, is also based off of whether or not they're gonna get their burgundy. It also has a lot to do and is brought up when on their release day of what their ranking was the week that they leave and how it has progressed since they got there. They also do have community meetings which is where they'll bring any type of, you know, issues that they have inside of the prison to Gallipo. They'll also get burgundies there and they'll just talk about different issues going on. One of the girls that I connected with, like from the start, she had an attitude, but you could tell that she had such a big heart and when it came close to her release date, she really just got really feisty, really snappy. Her attitude got really bad. And she even said that she was very, very nervous to leave um, because she knew that she was gonna be surrounded by the same people. Gallipo does still have a program like this. It's just been relocated. And that is all talked about in season two of Girls Incarcerated. I think that this whole program is just awesome. What they do with these girls is awesome. They're literally rebuilding these girls' lives and changing a lot of these girls' lives for the better. I do really hope you all will watch this documentary. And also, I really hope that you guys liked this because this is something that I really want to discuss. Also, if you all did like season one and would like to see me break down season two, please do get this video to 10 likes so I do know to do that. I mean, 17% return, that's excellent. And I mean, all through the documentary, they do show like every single one of the girls ups and downs, their trials, their tribulations, different things that they have to work on and you know, what really is, you know, their main root of what is the root of the problem. And they work on those things all throughout the documentary. And it's just so amazing how they're able to really just individualize that and work with every single girl individually. I will go ahead and say that season two is a lot different. It is a different facility. And like I said, the girls have committed more serious, they have more serious offenses, but I would really like to break it down for you guys as well. Also, I do want to give a big thank you to Christina for recommending this documentary. Thank you so much, darling. I am very much for prison reform as well, and I am so, so happy that you recommended this documentary. So I hope you all did enjoy this beauty and documentary breakdown. I hope you did enjoy this look. I'm very much vibing with it, especially this lip gloss. Ooh, so pretty. Don't forget there has been a secret emoji in this video somewhere. If you comment it down below, it will get you an extra entry into my 100 subscriber giveaway, which we are getting very, very, very close to. I really hope you guys enjoy this and I do hope that you all take a little bit from this and know that there are some places within our country that is doing an incredible job of making sure that our neighbors are the best type of neighbors we could have. That's how I'm gonna put that. Yeah, that's how I'm gonna put that. I do love you guys oh so, 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 so much. And until next time, bye.